Today on Not Sam Wrestling, The Rock has joined the bloodline, but what did any of it mean? Cody Rhodes promises to put his hands on The Rock, but chooses Roman Reigns, but is talking to Seth Rollins. The Elimination Chamber is right around the corner, and this, <laughs> this is Not Sam Wrestling. Welcome to Not Sam Wrestling on what is the most tumultuous, however, also still interesting road to WrestleMania that I remember. Usually, it's either, like, the WrestleMania 30 road to WrestleMania was interesting, but only in the sense that there was a, a clear battle going on between what fans wanted and what the company wanted. And other WrestleManias have had interesting bills, but maybe not as Rocky. This is, the, to me, Rocky is a pun there, I guess. To me, this is a meeting of, 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 of both. Where usually when something gets this tumultuous, it ends up almost getting to the point where it becomes difficult to follow. Because... When you have storylines that feel like you can predict how they're going to go and then they start to change, a little bit of that is good. A little bit of that is unpredictable. But a lot of that can put you at risk to have your audience lose faith in your credibility as a storyteller. That's not what's going on here because every time that we think the wrong move could be being made, it's not committed to, and then something far more interesting happens to get us to the point where we need to have a conversation about everything that we've just seen. And quite frankly, that's what we're here to do. So thank you for everybody that tuned in to the emergency podcast that we had to do directly after SmackDown. Again, those emergency podcasts, those are more about our feelings. Those are before we have the opportunity to really sit, marinate on it, bring in all the details, go frame by frame, because we will be going frame by frame on a lot of this stuff this week because that's what it requires. We were promised that The Rock and Roman Reigns would both be in Salt Lake City, Utah. And that promise was fulfilled as these days, narratively speaking, most, if not all promises, end up getting filled. Um, we knew it was going to happen. We had a great SmackDown building up to it. And then around 9.35-ish, that Roman Reigns music hit, and he took his sweet time getting to the ring as he always does, and he, uh, he he lets Salt Lake City, Utah, know that they should be acknowledging him. And Roman Reigns, first and foremost, tells Utah not to ruin it. He doesn't trust Utah. He thinks that, well, I seem to think that a lot of the Utah fans of the WWE may be of limited intelligence. I don't know that there's anything that could back up that claim, but Roman seemed to think that that was the case. And he told the fans, you're going to want to do your, your chants. You're going to want to do your catchphrases. You're going to see my cousin, and you're going to get excited. But you need to not ruin this moment. He said, this is the greatest moment. This is the greatest night, he said in the history of the WWE. And then they're chanting, Cody, Cody, Cody. And Roman Reigns said, oh, you mean the guy who ruined everything? Cody Rhodes. So already we're getting all these cues, right? We know immediately that Cody is being looked at as a spoiler here. Where the backlash came because Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble. He pointed to Roman Reigns. He said, I'm fighting Roman Reigns. He went on Busted Open the day of the Royal Rumble, the morning before he won, spoke to myself and Tommy Dreamer. He said, yeah, of course, the story really should end at WrestleMania 40 with Roman Reigns. That's what he said. And then he won the Royal Rumble. And then he pointed not just to the WrestleMania sign, but the skybox that Roman Reigns was in. And he told us all without telling us all, we are going to get this match at WrestleMania 40. And then... We find out that CM Punk is injured and we go, well, that's going to put a monkey wrench into everything. But I seen him point to that skybox that Roman Reigns was in. And then he comes out on, on SmackDown and he says, I am going to finish the story, but just not at WrestleMania. And then The Rock comes out and he has the stare down with Roman Reigns and it's put us in to this spot that we're in today. People turned on The Rock, at least online, because people in numbers haven't really turned on him in arenas. But on the internet, 
They turned on him in a big way. And they turned on him online and made it look like he was a spoiler in this. That the WWE audience, who as I've said on this podcast, and this is something you have to really put a lot of weight in, there is a huge portion of the WWE audience, at least in my anecdotal research, that have not been watching for 30 years, that have not been watching for 20 years, that have not been watching for 15 years. There is a huge portion of the WWE audience that has picked up within the last two or three years. Everywhere I go, every time I talk to fans, every time we go to an email segment on this show, we hear from hardcore fans that have been watching the product for two, three years. And I love that. I think it's such a good thing for wrestling. And evidence of that would be in the fact that WWE is super hot right now. And you can see that in terms of the number of people watching on television as compared to other television shows week to week, the number of people going to arenas, which again, SmackDown sold out. The number of people watching on Peacock, which are figures that Triple H speaks about at every uh, uh, media scrum after every show, merchandise, whatever you want to look at, whatever metric you want to look at, it is clear that business is very, very good. And one of the things that is guiding that is the fact that there's more people spending money to watch the product. It makes perfect sense. So there's this big audience that while, yes, The Rock is great to see and everybody knows who The Rock is because even if you haven't been watching WWE, you watched him in San Andreas. Everybody knows who The Rock is. It's like Hulk Hogan. You know, when Hulk Hogan joined the NWO, you didn't need to have been watching since 1985 to understand that this is the good guy name synonymous with professional wrestling. The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin both kind of took on those roles where even if you've never watched 30 seconds of professional wrestling in your life, you know who The Rock is, you know who Stone Cold Steve Austin is. But all that said, if you've only watched WWE for the last two or three years, Cody Rhodes is the story that you're invested in. And even if you have watched WWE for the last two to three decades, like me and a lot of people like me, you're also invested in this Cody Rhodes story. So when The Rock came in, one of the uh, big detractions from it, one of the reasons that the audience was like, nah, 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 as LA Knight would say, was because The Rock was looked at as a spoiler. That while, yes, we want to see Rock versus Roman Reigns. And a lot of people, you know, the supporters of Rock are going, you always said you wanted to see Rock versus Roman Reigns. Now you don't want to see Rock versus Roman Reigns. That was never the case. Everybody, I think, most people, not everybody, a lot of people want to see Rock versus Roman Reigns. But Cody and Roman was heavily implied to us. Cody and Roman, a lot of people probably felt, was promised to them six days before it was taken away. If you didn't promise to people six days before, then maybe not. But because the promise had already been made when Cody Rhodes won the Rumble and pointed to Roman Reigns, because that promise had already been made, Rock was looked at as spoiling this thing that a lot of fans had invested in. So Roman, hearing the Cody chants and saying, Cody, you mean the guy who ruined everything? Immediately we're shifting that narrative. Immediately we're twisting it which is exactly what you should be doing. Immediately, we're taking this thing, which is how we felt. We got, you know, ruining the main event. But from the heel perspective, which the heels are going to think that they're right, they were here to deliver the main event of the century. They didn't see themselves as spoilers of this. And so now they see Cody Rhodes as the spoiler. And the reason they're heels is because fans saw Rock as the spoiler to this Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes thing. But Roman Reigns says, do not do the catchphrase thing. Don't cheer for the catchphrases. Don't chant the catchphrases. Don't sing along with the champ. Because everything that we say has meaning. Everything that we say has purpose. It was almost like everything counts. It was almost like when we made rule number three, everything counts. 
last November here on Not Sam Wrestling, I actually knew what I was doing. Look, I don't want to put too fine a point on this, but in broad strokes, this show is pretty good at reading the room. So he basically says everything counts, which is what I've been trying to tell you for months and months and months. But when he says, don't do the catchphrase thing, this is Wrestling 101. When a heel tells an audience, don't do this, whatever you do, don't do this, it is a cue to the audience. What should they do? That. Whatever he just said not to do, that's what we should do because he's the bad guy and we're the audience. We're good guys. We're good people. We're just trying to have a good time. So if the bad guy doesn't want us to do it, we better do it. So The Rock comes out. And when The Rock shows up, he's wearing, and this, this sent shockwaves. I mean, Rock showed off his forearm. Look at that. We have about the same size forearm, me and The Rock. And he showed it. He got goosebumps. He had goosebumps on his arm and he showed everybody the goosebumps. Except when he showed everybody the goosebumps, I also had goosebumps. And the reason I had goosebumps is because attached to that big Rocky Maivia arm was a Versace vest, was a very expensive looking set of chains, was a pair of sunglasses that didn't look like they were coming off anytime soon. This looked like an evolved, you know, in Pokemon, when your Pokemons evolve, right? When you get, I don't know, you start with uh, Charmander and he becomes a uh, chameleonaire or whatever. I don't know. I don't know all the Pokemon, but you know what I'm saying. They evolve. This was the evolved version. This is like, this is like when Shredder gets doused with mutagen. Somebody took 1998 corporate rock, 1997 even, corporate rock and they put the ooze on him and he became the super shredder version of corporate rock and this is modern day rock to me it's not hollywood rock it's a return to the original rock and the reason it's a return to the original rock is because as i said on the bone the emergency not bonus emergency podcast what made the original rock come out the rock that looked down upon the audience, the rock that called them Rudy Poos, the rock that referenced them as pieces of trailer park trash. What was it that made that rock come out of, 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 the, of, 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 of the ooze? People chanting Rocky sucks. Die, Rocky, die. Rocky Maivia in 1996 debuted in the WWE. The audience started chanting, Rocky sucks, Rocky sucks. He was smiling. JR was calling him a blue chipper. It was all going to turn out great. He won the Intercontinental Championship. He beat the Sultan at WrestleMania. Things were looking up. Grandson of the High Chief Peter Maivia, son of Soul Man Rocky Johnson. Here he is for you. What do we do? Boo. Boo this man. Boo. And what happens? The Rock comes out of that. And we go forward. 97 to 2007 to 2017 to 2024. 18, 19, 20, 22, 20, 23, 24. Almost 30 years later, 27 years later. Let's call it 26 because it was, well, whatever. 27 years later, The Rock comes back and he stares down the biggest bad guy in wrestling. And he's there for the people. He beats up Jinder Mahal one week. The next week, he's staring down Roman Reigns. And what do people chant? Not to his face, but when he's not there, Remember Seth Rollins? He said, I didn't expect to hear that chant. Rocky sucks. Rocky sucks. What happens when you chant Rocky sucks? Same thing that happens when you say Beetlejuice three times. The Rock comes back. And here he is, the real Rock. And he tells everybody that before we start, he's got something. I got something It's going to make you happy. And I love this way he speaks. It's very... Corporate. It's like when a, when a when a when a boss. It's like what a boss says right before he gives his employees their Christmas bonus, which is a membership to the Jelly of the Month Club. 
it's it's that sort of condescending pat on the head. I think this is going to make you guys happy. Last time we heard The Rock speak like that was at the WrestleMania kickoff event in Las Vegas when he said, I got something to show you guys, and I think you're going to think it's pretty cool. And it's his own family tree. This time, he says, I got something that's going to make you happy. We've set a new indoor attendance record in Utah. Everybody's cheering. And he goes, no, you didn't hear what the record is. It's the record for the biggest collection of trailer park trash that The Rock has ever seen. And watching The Rock do that in a $500 shirt vest was, I mean, it brought out the, the child in me, the inner child that has been lying dormant since 1998 was there. And I said, here we go. And he started saying, you know, this is something that's going to be spectacular. You need to shut your mouths and just bear witness to greatness. This is something that, that, that you and your 50 wives are going to have a story to tell your 600 inbred grandchildren about. They're in Utah. OK, you got the biggest movie star in Hollywood. OK, you got a, you got a guy with a with a billion dollar tequila company movie star. making fun of people for having 50 wives and inbred grandchildren. It's just the greatest world that we're living in right now. There's never been a greater timeline. He said, he mentioned he was going to slap the herpes off of somebody's lip, which I did not see the lip, but it felt very much like, yep, I remember this rock. I like this rock. And then he said, he, he, he followed up on what Roman had said. He said, you had the greatest WrestleMania main event in the history of the WWE. And what'd you do? You flushed it down the toilet. For what? We want Cody. We want Cody. Again, this is something where The Rock and Roman Reigns, and The Rock especially, think so highly of themselves that they were going to bestow upon the WWE fans the gift of us. I am going to give you the gift of gazing upon me and my cousin wrestling. You're welcome. <laughs> I mean, what a spin, huh? What a spin. When he goes, he goes, he goes, uh, uh, and then he talks about Cody's story. What Cody is story finishing, he says. You don't get a shot at another story just because you want it. And he starts going over sports teams. He's talking about the San Francisco 49ers that lost the Super Bowl. He goes, they don't say that their story's not finished. Their story's finished. They dust themselves off like men and go forward. Brings up the Utah Jazz. And yes, there are moments where the rock is not as smooth as he has been in the past. Um, but I think that's okay. There was, there was I think... Uh, I think usually The Rock is in a very, very controlled environment. Usually The Rock is in an environment where people are just happy to see him and he can cut a quick promo, beat up a bad guy, and split. It's been a long time since he was in an environment where he truly had to ride the wave of the audience. And I think what we saw was The Rock getting back into the spirit of that. And I think that every single time that Dwayne The Rock Johnson touches that microphone in the modern era, oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. He's adapting. He's moving. He's riding the wave like Maui. And I think that, uh, that, 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 that we're only seeing the beginning of what The Rock is capable of in this character. He says uh, 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 this thing about Cody's story. And that's been the first, well, that's been one of the criticisms of, of what The Rock did. Um, well, I just, I'll tell you the rest of it. And then we'll start to get into the theories, right? Um, he says, The Rock is going to make sure, he says, Cody Rhodes, The Rock is going to make sure that you walk out of WrestleMania it, the, exactly the same way that you walked in, which is as a loser. By the way, Interesting moment that he uh, 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 pointed there. We'll talk about it. Uh, and then he tells the audience that they need to shut up and enjoy the ride The Rock is taking them on. This is so interesting to me. Because this story 
really starts when The Rock did the Pat McAfee show on a Friday in Colorado. And then The Rock and Pat McAfee made a surprise appearance that night on SmackDown uh, uh, in uh, uh, Colorado as well. But on that Pat McAfee show, which some people say was college game day, it was not college game day. It was the same set as college game day. The next day he would do college game day. But the interview happened on the Pat McAfee show on ESPN. And that was the first time that he addressed the fact that he wanted to be at WrestleMania the year before. The fact that it was not an issue with his training. The fact that they, he wanted to tell a story. He wanted to do something the likes of which he had never done before. He wanted to do something the likes of which nobody had ever seen before. And he wanted to do something that was not the ending of something, but the beginning of something. That's the beginning of this story. But around that time and, and, and after that, as more every time he would do press, somebody would bring up the WrestleMania thing now. He would say things like, you know, just enjoy the ride. And there are times when you say, just enjoy the ride. And it's like, oh, cool, man. Yeah, this is going to be fun. But when you got the biggest movie star in the world who fans think has an ego problem because they think in a real life way, he's taking the main event away from Cody Rhodes to feed, serve and feed his own ego. There are a lot of fans that think that. That's what this character is based on right now. When he, in a Versace vest, without taking his sunglasses off, says, shut up and enjoy the ride, that's his way of saying, you don't know what you want. I'll serve you whatever it is that I'm serving. And you'll, you'll feel just privileged to be in my kitchen. It went from Burger King, have it your way. We're just having a good time. To the chef from the menu, where if you don't like it, you might end up not leaving this island. That's where The Rock is at right now. And then he says, if you smell what the bloodline is cooking. And at the end of the night, there's a pose with Rock and Roman and Jimmy Uso and Solo Sokoa and Paul Heyman. And they all appear to be unified. And we look at the bloodline. Uh, now, the criticisms. So, um, or not just the criticisms, but the way it's being interpreted. Some say, well, The Rock's now he's trying to be a heel, but the fans aren't booing him. To me, I don't think that that matters. To me, the basis of this character, the basis of this version of The Rock is that I don't want to hear it from you guys anymore because you can, you can cheer me now all you want. Do whatever you want. But the fact is that I tried to give you the greatest WrestleMania match that's ever existed and you booed me. So you could cheer me now, but you booed me. I and my cousin were ready to give you the greatest match that's ever happened and you didn't allow it to happen. And now you want to cheer? Go ahead, cheer. You're the idiot. I don't think, and then, you know, Roman at the beginning of that promo saying, don't do catchphrases. That's not what you do if you want an ad audience to not do catchphrases. If you want an audience to not cheer The Rock, there are better ways to do it than what happened on SmackDown. If you're willing to allow an audience to cheer The Rock because it's inevitable, and because, let's face it, it's, it's The Rock, you're always going to be excited to see him. But that's part of the story that you're telling if you want to really think about it then I think it's a different scenario. The fans cheering for The Rock, even though The Rock resents them because they didn't allow him to do the WrestleMania match that he wanted to do, is the story. So fans can, they can cheer The Rock all they want. It doesn't upset this character at all. In this, like It could upset him emotionally, but it doesn't disjoint the character. If The Rock is not getting booed, this character is not disjointed because we all saw what happened when they thought that he was going to WrestleMania to face Roman Reigns. So that stands firm. The, the, the second criticism that I've seen is that it was illogical what The Rock was saying, that The Rock was saying Cody doesn't get to finish his story just because he wants to. And he was ignoring the Royal Rumble. What I don't understand about that criticism is, of course, The Rock 
feels that way. The Rock is an egotistical, self-interested villain. The Rock is not looking at things from a from an outside logical perspective. The Rock is looking at things from a perspective that is so biased towards his side, it's hard to even call it a scale anymore. Of course, The Rock thinks that Cody, because because if you ask Cody, if what The Rock was saying was true, we'd be in a huge problem with WrestleMania. If what The Rock was saying was true and Cody is only getting to go to WrestleMania because he was whining and because there are Cody crybabies that want it to happen, we'd have a huge issue with the main event of WrestleMania. The reason that the main event of WrestleMania can be Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns and people will be happy is because what The Rock was saying is not true. Because Cody had to work even harder to get to WrestleMania again. Had to had to had to go through some of the toughest opponents that he's ever dealt with. Had to win the Royal Rumble again. Had to deal with CM Punk coming back. Had to deal with The Rock returning and still made it to WrestleMania. But that's not how The Rock would see it because if The Rock saw it as well Cody earned his shot at WrestleMania, then how could then he then say that Cody spoiled what should have been a great main event. If The Rock is going to acknowledge that Cody Rhodes won the Royal Rumble and has every right to go to WrestleMania, then The Rock can't also say he ruined what should have been a great main event. The Rock doesn't care if he won WrestleMania. I mean, Royal Rumble. The Rock thinks he's better than Cody Rhodes. So, of course, The the Rock's argument doesn't hold up. Because The Rock's not a good guy. He's a bad guy. He's literally on Roman Reigns' side. He's on the bloodline. Which brings us to our next point. And this, this is where you start tracking it shot by shot. This is where you look at what's really going on beneath the surface. The first thing was uh, The Rock saying, The Rock is going to make sure you walk out of WrestleMania the same way you walked in, which is a loser. When The Rock said this, the camera panned to an angle and we saw Roman and the bloodline and The Rock. And there was a slight separation there. And it looked as though while Roman was looking into the audience, not looking at The Rock, The Rock was pointing at Roman Reigns and saying, The Rock is going to make sure that you walk out of WrestleMania a loser, which is the same way you walked in. It looked like he was pointing directly at Roman Reigns when he said it. Was he? I don't know. Because later on, when The Rock actually is looking at the bloodline, the angle is slightly different. Now, maybe they were just trying to not make it so obvious Because then why wouldn't Roman or the rest of the bloodline notice it? Paul Heyman slightly acknowledged it, but that might've just been Paul Heyman making a Paul Heyman face. What was the angle of the camera? This is, this is the, 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 the level of shot by shot analysis that we're doing. What was the angle of the actual camera shot? It looked like Roman was pointing at Roman. I mean, it looked like rock was pointing at Roman, but was that because the camera was tilted in a certain way? Or was The Rock actually pointing at Roman Reigns? These are questions that we'll continue to ask. At the end of the segment, everybody puts up their ones. I always have my one up. I'm bloodline. Everybody knows this. But The Rock didn't do this. The Rock did this. Is this a gun? Is this an L? Is he pointing his finger up like this? There are three, two reasons he could be pointing his finger up like this. One, he's letting us all know that the bloodline is going to lose at WrestleMania and he's going to make sure of it. Or two, he just didn't realize you're supposed to tuck your thumb in. Both of those things are entirely plausible. Both. It's hard to it's hard to know exactly where it's going to go. But I love the idea that we're going shot by shot, going through all of it. What do I think is going to happen? I can't tell you what I think is going to happen because I have no idea. 
What could happen? Look, I talked about this on the emergency podcast. For me, I think there's a short-term version of this and a long-term version of this. The short-term version of this is that The Rock turns on Roman at WrestleMania. The Rock could turn on Roman at WrestleMania and The Rock could raise Cody hands, Cody Rhodes' hand in the air and you could almost get a throwback to uh, the Royal Rumble when Roman Reigns won in Philadelphia. And The Rock raised his arm in the air, but the whole crowd booed. We go to the same city, the city of brotherly love, except now we're in a stadium instead of an arena. And The Rock holds up Cody's arm and the fans cheer. And then maybe The Rock can show up on SmackDown after WrestleMania and explain to Roman Reigns how sound works. When you were supposed to be anointed as the new hero, this was the sound the audience made. But when Cody was anointed as the new hero, this was the sound the audience made. What sound do I want to be associated with, Roman? What sound does my family want to be associated with, Roman? And this is when we realize that The Rock is disgusted with Roman Reigns. That The Rock, not Cody said that the ancestors, the uh, grandfathers, would be disappointed in Roman Reigns. That's when The Rock says, the, I don't know how the grandfathers feel. I don't know how the High Chief Peter Maivia feels. I don't know how your grandfather feels, but I do know this, your cousin is disappointed. And we carry on from there with maybe The Rock dismantling the bloodline in that moment. That's possible. What I'd like to see is The Rock as a member of the board of directors sticking around a little bit longer. And I'd like this to play out where The Rock actually does help Roman beat Cody Rhodes. The Roman Reigns retains the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. Right now. That's how I feel. And I would like The Rock to stand with the bloodline. But I would like over time to see the gradual shift, right? The Rock shows up even less than Roman Reigns. When Roman Reigns shows up, it's a big deal. But when The Rock shows up, it's a huge deal. When Roman Reigns shows up, he's the boss. But when The Rock shows up, he's the boss's boss. He's the final boss. And then we start to see over the over the next couple of months, Roman Reigns makes plans to do certain things. And we build towards it, and then The Rock comes in and goes, no, we're not going to do that. This is what we're doing instead. And it becomes clear. And finally, The Rock goes, Roman, your title reign is impressive. But there's a reason you have that title, Roman. And that's when we cash in on the fact that Roman has had that frustrating Interference finish happens so often. Why would the WWE keep doing that finish that deflates so many people in the audience with Solo Sokoa interfering? Well, and why would we do it again? You know, we, we block Solo from interfering at WrestleMania, but The Rock interferes. Another interference. Well, eventually, it gets pointed out to Roman by The Rock. People like Solo Sokoa and The Rock are the reason that you still have that title. We've appointed you to that position, but that's what we're doing. So sit down and listen. And we get to this spot that Roman starts to doubt himself. Roman starts to realize that maybe The Rock is right. And there are moments where Roman gets mad, but he steps down. And slowly, this this shift happens where you have Roman Reigns taking the role that Jey Uso took in the beginning of the bloodline and The Rock taking the role that Roman had at the beginning of the bloodline. And eventually Roman loses the WWE Universal Championship to Cody Rhodes. Doesn't have to happen at WrestleMania. Cody gets one more match and Roman loses. 
And The Rock is disgusted with Roman Reigns. And that's when Roman finally snaps on The Rock. And The Rock and Solo Sokoa and Jimmy Uso, and who knows, maybe Jacob Fatu, maybe, maybe, maybe new members beat down Roman Reigns. And the Roman Reigns beatdown happens, and that's when Roman Reigns disappears from television. And the bloodline remains on television. The Rock can pop in here and there. But really, it's Paul Heyman with the new tribal chief, Solo Sokoa, with Jimmy Uso, and maybe other members of the Mayavia, Fatu, and Hawaii family. Until early 2025, Roman's back. Roman returns. And he starts taking out members of the bloodline. And now Roman's a babyface. Now people are cheering for Roman. People want that beast Roman Reigns back. People want that Roman Reigns that can just wreck everybody. And it brings us to WrestleMania 41, where we can finally do Roman Reigns versus The Rock. No championship. The Rock is a bad guy. Roman Reigns is a good guy. And if done correctly, for the first time, you can have Roman Reigns main event WrestleMania as a hero who actually gets cheered by everybody. That's where I'd go. But that would also, I mean, I just did a year story and a lot can happen within a year. It's easy for me from a podcast desk to fantasy book a year. Meanwhile, it's not like that was the only mega promo segment that happened this week. On Monday, you had Cody Rhodes coming out and Cody Rhodes uh, 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 says that, well, first he makes it clear that he's challenging Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. The one thing that was clear about both the Cody promo and the Roman promo is that as it stands right now, Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns is happening at WrestleMania 40 as the graphic that was posted by Triple H would dictate. So Cody makes that clear. And then he says that he wasn't almost wasn't even going to be able to say it, but the audience allowed him to say it. Now, Cody has not explained why he gave up his WrestleMania spot yet. You know, you can say, you I, to me, I don't like the idea of Cody just saying, well, I wasn't going to fight Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, but the audience made it so that there was no choice. Okay, but explain to me exactly how. If what you're telling me is The Rock used corporate influence to get your spot, tell me that The Rock used corporate influence to get your spot if that's the story that we're telling. Because if that's the case, you, Cody, went on TV and said not at WrestleMania. I'm going to finish the story. I'm going to take everything, but not at WrestleMania. Why did you say not at WrestleMania? I talked about this right after the press conference, but to me, I feel like if you say that you said that because of corporate influence, it makes it very difficult because that would mean that when corporate told you to act in a way that didn't benefit us, the WWE universe, that you went with it. I feel like it would be great if Cody was like, hey, I was manipulated by The Rock. I thought I was going to get an opportunity with Roman Reigns. And I thought that The Rock had the best interest of the WWE Universe in his heart. He did not. He had the best interest of The Rock in his heart. And unfortunately, call me naive. Maybe he mistook my kindness for weakness. But I had a momentary lapse in judgment. And it'll never happen again. Just that would at least explain that step. I think that we do have to, you know, that the, the, I would like to see those those steps explained. He says that uh, 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 he plays the clip from uh, Pat McAfee's show that aired before the WrestleMania press conference where The Rock talks about the Cody crybabies for the first time putting chicken nuggets in their backsides. 
and makes Pat McAfee explain what to do with the chicken nuggets, which McAfee does tell him, put it in the backside, is what The Rock was saying. McAfee didn't say that. The Rock said that. Uh, everything counts. Why are we playing Pat McAfee? Everything counts. The Rock is doing interviews. That's where this character begins. Everything counts. He says that The Rock put his hands on him. Cody says The Rock put his hands on him, and what that means, Rock, is I am going to hit you back. And before we can get anywhere further, Seth Rollins' music hits. Now, there is a problem. You know, this happened a week before when Drew McIntyre's music hits, but I feel like all of the GMs, Nick Aldis, all of them, everybody needs to get, Adam Pierce needs to get in on this. Ava Rain should be tipped off too. The interruptions have to stop. People are not finishing their thoughts. And I have questions that need answers. And they're not getting answers because of the interruptions. Stop with the interruptions. <laughs> so um, Seth comes out and he says, what can I say besides your welcome? Love it. Moana reference. Uh, and then he says that uh, uh, he wants Cody to take the title away from Roman Reigns because Roman is too powerful of a champion. He wants the title to come back to the people, which is, uh, makes perfect sense. Great sentiment, understood, fantastic. He says, uh, uh, Cody said that he wanted to took, take everything from Roman Reigns, and Seth felt that. He felt that. Seth acknowledges that he's at least partly responsible for the person that Roman Reigns has become. He was the architect of it. Great. Acknowledging history. Everything counts. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, and then he tells Cody that he will be Cody's shield. And you're like, oh boy, here we go. Now this is why I, ha I have to... And there's a lot at play here. Like, I can't believe that The Rock is going to turn on Roman and Seth is going to turn on Cody. But Seth is going to turn on Cody. If I would, if Seth Rollins was like, hey, Sam, I want to do for you what I did for my brothers in the shield. I go, hit me in the back with a steel chair? Like, I don't remember the minute Triple H asks you to? Like, I don't remember? I know my history. Everything counts. I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, at the Elimination Chamber, and this is where it gets very interesting, because Seth is very intertwined with Cody, Rock, and Roman Reigns. I feel like, so here's what I think should happen. I still think that a Rock, Roman, Seth, Cody match should happen. I do not think it should happen at night one of WrestleMania. I do not think Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes should wrestle twice. And Seth Rollins, because the Elimination Chamber, I do not think they should wrestle twice at WrestleMania. I think Seth Rollins should headline WrestleMania night one, sun Saturday, and Roman Reigns and Cody should main event Sunday WrestleMania. But I would love if on SmackDown, like two or three weeks before WrestleMania or Raw, we just got that tag match. Roman and Rock, the same way. I mean, there's only so much to do before WrestleMania. It's not going to happen in the Elimination Chamber. So what if we just put it on television? What if we got the Rock and Roman Reigns wrestling on television in a tag match against Seth and Cody? And we do it like two, three weeks before WrestleMania. You can have whoever is going to, uh, 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 the way I probably just finished it, whoever is going to wrestle Cody, uh, uh, Seth interferes, Seth gets pulled out, Cody turns around. Seth is not there for him. Roman beats up Cody. Rock hits the rock bottom, pins Cody. And now there's like, Seth, where were you? Why to deal with this guy? And then we can move forward by, we've had that match. We've had that play out. People have touched. And now we can go forward with Seth versus whoever wins the elimination chamber. Because Seth has this whole other thing he's working on. I do think that after WrestleMania, whether Cody wins or loses, I think that the first program after WrestleMania for Cody will be with Seth. 
I think Seth turns on Cody immediately after WrestleMania. And I believe that I would love to see Backlash's main event be Seth Rollins versus Cody Rhodes. You know, I think, I think, I think that Seth hitting Cody Rhodes in the back with a steel chair the night after WrestleMania is something that, as the children would say, I'm here for. Uh, we've got Elimination Chamber, a uh, premium live event coming up uh, on Saturday, uh, which a lot of people are like, that's very early in the morning. Uh, Saturday, uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, if you want to watch live on Peacock. Now, in the rib of all ribs, as of right now, I'm invited back to a main roster kickoff show for the first time in a long time. It's at 4 a.m. <laughs> so I'll be happy. I'll be happy to help kick off the elimination chamber at 4 a.m. Saturday morning. It's gonna be awesome. I honestly, as 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 big as things have gotten leading into this pay per view, it is such. It's gonna be a big one, and it's gonna be a cool vibe, right? Maybe and and you know, you could either watch live on Peacock. You could also watch later in the day or whatever, but they've done a really good job. I mean, we've only got four matches announced so far. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there are more, but be, those chamber matches, I mean, this is what you had at the Royal Rumble too, right? You had two Rumble matches and then two other matches and that was it. And you still had a four hour pay-per-view. So I would not be surprised based on, on what the WWE has been like uh, lately if this was your whole card, four matches and an interview segment, um, you've got Rhea Ripley versus Nia Jax, which I think is a, a good title defense on Rhea's way to WrestleMania. Um, but I think Rhea Ripley beats Nia Jax. And I think uh, Nia, who knows? You know, maybe she's got Jade Cargill at WrestleMania. Maybe she's got something else going on at WrestleMania. Uh, and then the tag team championship matches, Finn Balor and Damian Priest versus uh, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. I'd be surprised if Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate beat the Judgment Day, but also I don't know what story the Judgment Day have going into WrestleMania with the tag title. I guess I don't know what story they have without the tag title. So, yeah, I'm, I, but I would imagine the Judgment Day wins that match. And then, of course, the Grayson Waller effect with Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins. And depending on how that goes, that Grayson Waller effect could be the main event of the show depending on how it goes. An Instagram video went up with Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman, and Roman Reigns made it clear that he was not going to be in Perth. He did not want to go to Perth. He was not going to be in Perth. Does that mean he's not going to be in Perth? I don't know. What do I know? What am I, his travel agent? But, I mean, just with everything that's been going on, man, I, I would not be surprised if that headlines the show. It might not, but it could headline. Uh, your two Elimination Chamber matches. One, uh, we're going with World Heavyweight Championship matches. The winners of the Royal Rumble, Cody Rhodes and Bailey, picked the WWE Champion and WWE Women's Champion respectively. So, the winner of the Men's Elimination Chamber match faces the World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins and the winner of the Women's Elimination Chamber match uh, faces the women's world champion, Rhea Ripley. Uh, you've got Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, Liv Morgan, Naomi, Tiffany Stratton, and a sixth participant who will be named after a battle royale on Monday Night Raw. Uh, you know, I think everybody is looking towards Becky Lynch in this one. All the, all the sort of movement has been made towards Becky Lynch is going to be the one to face Rhea Ripley. But, I mean, at the same time, Liv Morgan is telling a story with Rhea Ripley. Bianca Belair, if she's not in a main event match at WrestleMania, I don't know what she's doing at WrestleMania. I don't know who the sixth person is going to be. Uh, and I don't think Tiffany Stratton is going to win the Elimination Chamber, but I do think it'll be a really great opportunity for her to really kind of show out in the, the men's elimination chip, but I would still pick Becky Lynch, 
right now. I just feel like that's your big match. You know, I, I think that, that Becky Lynch has been kept out of the women's championship scene for a reason. And that's because when she's back in, it's a big deal. And what's a bigger deal than WrestleMania? So I, I, I feel like, and I feel like if Rhea Ripley can beat Becky Lynch, now it's a whole different level. If Rhea Ripley can go to WrestleMania, beat Becky Lynch, and now she's been, she won the title at WrestleMania 39 against Charlotte, and then beats Becky at WrestleMania 40, it's like, what can possibly stop mommy? No, nothing. And then the men's elimination chamber, which is, I mean, loaded, 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 loaded. You've got Randy Orton, who I believe has more experience in the elimination chamber than just about anybody. I think he's done like eight chamber matches. You got Bobby Lashley, you've got Drew McIntyre, you've got LA Knight, you've got Logan Paul, and you've got Kevin Owens. So, you know, the some I predicted LA Knight versus Logan Paul at WrestleMania a long time ago, like last year. And, you know, the internet would have you believe that that's a possibility. But at the same time, we did Kevin Owens and Logan Paul at the Royal Rumble, and that story is still going, and we've never really gotten closure on that. Unless LA Knight's going to be added in as a triple threat or something like that. Um, you know, I kind of see Kevin Owens pinning Logan Paul, and then Kevin Owens going to WrestleMania to get the United States Championship match. Although I suppose LA Knight could be thrown in as a triple threat. But also, I don't know, if you want Kevin Owens to be a good guy, people are going to blow the roof off for LA Knight at WrestleMania. So, I don't know. It'll be really interesting to see. I feel like LA Knight, Logan Paul, Kevin Owens have one thing going on over here. And then Randy Orton, Bobby Lashley, Drew McIntyre have another thing going on here. Drew McIntyre feels like the obvious one. I think Drew McIntyre is one that, especially in this iteration of his character, people really want him to win. And I think that that it would make sense that he would win. And I think he's somebody that people go, yeah, and he could beat Seth Rollins and be the champion. Like this version of Drew McIntyre should be the champion. True. What are you doing with Randy Orton at WrestleMania? What's the plan? You know, I mean, unless you're going to turn Randy Orton heel and you're doing Orton versus LA Knight, it would feel like you're going to do Logan Paul versus Kevin Owens and LA Knight versus AJ Styles. So if those are two matches that you're looking at, but just based on stories right now, what do you have at WrestleMania for Randy Orton? Bobby Lashley has a thing going on with Karrion Cross. The idea that you're going to go to WrestleMania without a big slot for a returning Randy Orton feels like, an, like, like this embarrassment of riches that I haven't seen in a long time. <sighs> Unless you're going to do something with Sami Zayn and Randy Orton somehow. Mm. I just don't know because the thing about this Drew McIntyre character is he's perfect for getting the title shot at WrestleMania, but he's also perfect for getting screwed out of the title shot at WrestleMania. And maybe there's a way that Randy Orton wins the chamber and McIntyre finds his way into a triple threat against Rollins or something like that. I feel like the most logical thing is Drew McIntyre, the most Drew McIntyre versus Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. But Randy Orton is just that X factor that he's just, I look down at the, at the match card and Randy's the name that just keeps jumping out at me. So I don't know, man, I, I, I feel like it's going to be Drew in the whole scenario. I set up, it would be Drew interfering with that tag match, that super tag match that I have set up for television but Randy Orton is always an X factor. So we'll see if you have an idea of what Randy Orton could do, hit me up. And then, oh, maybe Randy Orton versus Braun Breaker. Braun Breaker gets signed to SmackDown officially this week. I would imagine that Braun Breaker is going to have a big match at Stand and Deliver. 
I mean, as good as Baron Corbin and Braun Breaker have been as a team, you almost wonder if the move is to call up Braun Breaker and Baron Corbin as a team. It feels like Braun Breaker is going to be a baby face. You could have Randy Orton turn heel and Braun Breaker beats him. That would be a big WrestleMania moment for Braun Breaker. Hmm. I don't know. Well, uh, if you know, leave a comment on YouTube or you can send me an email, you know. You can send me an email. NotSamWrestling at gmail.com is the email address. You could also tell me in person in Philadelphia. Don't forget, we're doing a live Not Sam Wrestling uh, in Philadelphia the week of WrestleMania. That's Wednesday, April 3rd at the Helium Comedy Club, 8 p.m. show. You can go to NotSam.com and get that tickets link right there. Scoop up those tickets. Be there. It is going to be uh, an excellent, excellent show, uh, as they always are, WrestleMania week. But, uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna it, 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 it's gonna get interesting. I also appreciate everybody that's uh, starting to tweet. Uh, a lot of people who took part in the Not Sam merch sale that happened uh, uh, a few weeks back. The winter logo T-shirts have gone out, and the hoodies are going out, and everything. So uh, some people have already gotten them. If you haven't gotten them yet, you'll get them this week. And if you didn't order them, that was stupid, man. Keep watching and keep listening to the show. Uh, and I'll let you know when the website merch happens again. Scoop up that merch when it's available because I guarantee you'll regret not having it. Premium quality, razor thin margins. Let's get to the emails. Not Sam Wrestling at gmail.com. Not Sam Wrestling at gmail.com. Uh, and let's go to Floyd. Hi Sam, how was Jimmy U how was Jimmy Uso allowed to sneak his way back into the bloodline without consequence? Well, I do feel like Jimmy has been on like probation from Roman ever since he got back in. Like Roman's allowed him back in, but he really has kept him under that thumb. No yeet. Okay, all right, whatever you say, Roman, whatever you say. Uh, I know he helped Roman retain at SummerSlam, but when Roman was off TV for two months, Jimmy was in. Uh, imitating and behaving like he was the tribal chief in his absence, surely that would have been addressed back then. But now I feel like any comeuppance Jimmy had coming uh, has now been pushed all the way back with The Rock joining the bloodline. Well, no, I don't think so. I mean, number one, it wasn't. I mean, they literally on television said there's a new tribal chief. There's this sec the second in command is now, and Jimmy stepped forward, and then they said uh, Solo Sokoa. Like, all they've done, if you watch... All they've done is humble Jimmy Uso every single chance they get. They they treat him like a total whipping boy. So I don't, I mean, I, I, I don't think that the explanation from Jimmy as to why he decided to go back to the bloodline after he's the one that turned on Roman Reigns, I don't think that was ever fully explained. But I think the, they've done a decent job of the bloodline uh, humbling Jimmy Uso. Um Ultra Boy, I know it's been a few weeks, uh, but I got to say, I actually lost my mind uh, when I saw you on the NXT Vengeance Day pre-show. It was awesome. Good. Also, I got to be honest, man. After the press conference, I kind of figured it was a done deal for Cody to win at Mania because to me, it made no sense for him to lose again. But now I realize that him losing again is the end of his story, at least for now, and yet another chapter in Roman's story. And I also realized that Roman is uh, being with The Rock uh, as the two-man power trip has much better story potential with Roman still champion. So now I'm back to thinking Roman's going to win and break Hogan's record. What are your thoughts? Well, I started the show with it. You can probably could have guessed that I was going to talk about uh, Roman Reigns and The Rock. Uh, I still think it could go either way. But, like, people go, if Cody loses, it's the end of Cody's story. Yes, and if Cody wins, it is also the end of Cody's story. And people go, well, it's not the end of Cody's story if he wins because then he's the champion. Well, Cody's not dead if he loses either. He continues on with the title or without the title. But if the story is to win the title and he doesn't win it or he wins it, either way, that's the end of the story. If anything, not winning the title continues the story. Winning the title is what ends the story. If Cody is defined by the story and you are worried about the story coming to an end, the end of the story is when he wins the title, not when he loses the title. He already lost the match. The story continues. 
He didn't say my story is to win the title by this date. He just said my story is to win the title. You know how many times Dusty Rhodes lost title matches? He lost them all the time. He also won a ton of them. The end of the story is not Cody losing. The end of the story is Cody winning. That's the end of the story. And so if you don't want the story to end, you better be careful what you wish for. Uh, let's see. Tom writes in, what a week of wrestling we've had. It's been crazy. Apologies in advance for the long email. Yeah, it's not a great way to start an email. Uh, I'm curious to see what you think will happen with Roman and The Rock. <laughs> Come on, dude. What do you think? Are you think I'm not going to talk about it? And I'm sure you'll cover it on the pod. Okay. But here are my thoughts. Okay, I'll, I'll listen to your thoughts, uh, Tom. Uh, I sent you a tweet this week as I noticed on the Bloodline family tree that The Rock put himself as the high chief but didn't acknowledge Roman as the tribal chief. That's true. I also noticed, as well as a few others, that The Rock pointed at Roman when he said, I'll do everything to make sure that you don't leave. Uh, maybe he pointed at Roman. With the WWE Universal title at WrestleMania, he might as well have been pointing at the title. But as we say, everything counts. Sure. He also did a gun sign uh, when he threw his one up in the air. That's the same sign Cody threw up after Royal Rumble, shouting out his friends at AEW. No. I mean, Cody's... This... No. Th like, Cody, like, blew the gun... Like the elite. Roman putting the gun up in the air was not the Kenny Omega thing. I mean, if anybody, if anything, it's the gun club. It's not. So that's not the same thing. I think we're going to see Rock screw Roman at Mania to help Cody finish the story. That was my short term uh, thing. Uh, but by the way, if Cody wins the title with the Rock's help, you better be delicate about how you do that. Because then Cody's story ends and it ends with a asterisk because The Rock got to help him. Personally, I'd love to see it go down like this as everyone gets what they want. Rock and Roman get their... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think we're going to see Rock screw Roman at Mania to help Cody finish the story. It'll come out that he's basically been playing a double agent to earn the trust of the bloodline, and it will set the foundation for a Rock versus Roman match at WrestleMania 41. I mean, I think that I got us there a lot better than this version of it. This would not do great things for Cody, I don't think. This version. But that's just me. Uh, what do you think? You know what I think, bro. Listen to the beginning of the show. Uh, Scott writes in, during Friday's bloodline section, am I uh, in the internet reading too much into The Rock saying to Cody, this is the end of your story and the beginning of ours, i.e. Rock Roman, when he said he would do everything in his power to make sure that you walk out a loser, the camera angle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got it. Uh, come, also, don't write an email where it's like, hey, you know this, like, the biggest thing in wrestling right now? I'm curious to hear what you think about it. It's a wrestling podcast. What are we going to do here? Uh, Mark writes in, thanks for, but I do understand the enthusiasm and appreciate that you guys are, are excited and you got to, and the fact that when you are excited about this stuff, you write to me, I love that. So, you know, please keep in mind that my criticisms in the email segment are always tongue in cheek and you should never feel bad about the emails that you write. Thanks for putting in the extra mileage each week. You're our road to WrestleMania emergency roadside assistance service. I am. I'm the 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 triple A on the road to WrestleMania. There's no doubt about it. You might have to add that to the Patreon pay level soon. I don't know, man. I uh, hope you've got uh, Prime in hand. I got DC. Uh, because the two months ahead have endless wild speculation in tow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. Uh, we have what has to be the eventual inclusion of Stone Cold as either a member of Rollins' proposed shield offer. If uh, No, you don't. I don't... I don't... I don't know... You can do Cody having Stone Cold at ringside. But, like, if you go back, there's a video on my YouTube channel where... Uh, I was given the opportunity to do a Q&A with Cody after a screen after the premiere of his uh, Peacock documentary, which I really love doing, and I really appreciate that uh, Cody and the WWE would have me do that. That was awesome. Um, but I asked him about the legends that are in this doc talking about him, about Hulk Hogan, about The Undertaker, about Ric Flair, and, like, you know, how wild is that as somebody who grew up a fan? And he said... Without being, you know, egotistical about it, 
They kind of should be. Cody's whole thing here is that it's cool that the legends are around, but that he's the one who's bringing this forward. And I don't know that it would fit the Cody character to have Stone Cold Steve Austin at ringside. I mean, maybe it would, and I'm sure there's a way you could do it. But I don't know that Cody would want to risk playing. I, 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 Cody versus Roman is the marquee. And I don't think you want to try to bury that under Rock and Stone Cold. I think Stone Cold could come back at some point, but I don't know for me if it's needed at WrestleMania. I mean, The Rock makes sense because of the bloodline. Stone Cold is just like also, remember Stone Cold? Uh, and by the way, like Stone Cold might be my favorite wrestler of all time. I would be ecstatic if Stone Cold came back. But I don't think it's quite as uh, seamless and organic uh, as maybe you do. John R. writes in, being on the road to WrestleMania, who would you like to see inducted into the Hall of Fame this year? For me, I think uh, being in Philly, the Blue Meanie should be considered for the Hall of Fame. He's been around since right around the Attitude Era with the WWE. Okay, uh, I think this year's Hall of Fame, I think Bray Wyatt should be the headline. I'd love to see Batista go in. Uh... From Philly, I don't want Paul Heyman to go in this year. And the reason I don't want Paul Heyman to go in this year is because I don't want the work that he is doing right now to be clouded with the work that he's done as a legend, right? I I, I, I think that Paul Heyman is so good at being Paul Heyman in the present and not relying on what he's done before that you don't want Paul Heyman to be looked at as a legend. You want Paul Heyman to be looked at as a current talent. Paul Heyman needs to be in the Hall of Fame at some point. And I get it, Philadelphia, but not for me. I would go Bray Wyatt, Batista, maybe Tommy Dreamer? For a little ECW representation, maybe Tommy Dreamer. Um, hmm. Trying to think. Bull Nakano. 100% Bull Nakano. And is there anybody else that's popping off the top of my head? Not the top of my head, but you got me. Uh, I, I feel like I'd have to do some real research to give you an answer. Uh, let's uh, see. Uh, Rick writes in, uh, good morning. Hope everything's well. Hope you're getting enough sleep since the arrival of your new child. What's enough sleep anyway? Who needs it? But I appreciate that, my man. Uh, I watched WWE. This is awesome yesterday. And the first match of Gorilla Monsoon, uh, versus the big cat Ernie Ladd was, no, that was the best of WWE. This is awesome is a different show. That's the clip show. This is awesome is the clip show. Ernie Ladd versus Gorilla Monsoon was on Best of WWE Black History Month. Um, but, okay, I, I'm with this. Gorilla Monsoon versus Big Cat, which is on Peacock, by the way, Best of WWE, was definitely uh, something I've never seen. I'm young, like born in 96 young. God bless you. So seeing that really opened my eyes to what professional wrestling was back then. That's awesome. The first three matches were great, honestly. Bobo, Bobo Brazil versus Bruiser Brody. Soul Patrol and Andre the Giant versus the Wild Samoans. And that was Afa. I want to say, was that Afa, Sika, and Tonga Kid? Or was that Afa, Samu, and Tonga? It might have been Afa, Samu, and Tonga Kid, that version of the Wild Samoans. You did great hosting the show. Thank you very much, man. I would like to toss out a match uh, into the universe uh, for seeing these first three matches. Bronson Reed versus uh, Omas at WrestleMania in a similar match to Ernie Ladd versus Gorilla Monsoon. Just two giant men going at it at WrestleMania. I like that. And since we're talking about awesome, I'm speculating that awesome truth takes the tag titles away from, ooh, Judgment Day at WrestleMania. All right. You know what? Uh, following that loss, Damian cashes in his money in the bank on Sami Zayn after he wins the world championship in a triple, triple threat match with Drew and Seth. Bro, I don't mind it. I don't mind either of those two things. I think, yes, man, I think that, 
I was just wondering what ju- what you were going to do with Judgment Day. Well, if you're but you if you are going to do that, I think that I would then okay. So I'm going to change what I'm doing then in terms of where I'm putting things on the match. If I were to do that, I am all for Awesome Truth versus Judgment Day at WrestleMania. I think that that's a great idea, and putting the tag team championship on Miz and r Truth at WrestleMania would be a huge, huge moment. Yeah, I'm for that. If we figure out a way to get Sami Zayn in a triple threat match and he wins the title, but then Damian Priest cashes in. Uh, I'm probably then going to put that on night two of WrestleMania and have Rhea Ripley and Becky Lynch headline Saturday, if that's what I'm doing. But here's the only thing. That's going to take Seth. Now we're taking Seth very far away from the Cody thing if we go in that direction. So I don't know about that. I'm not against it, especially the idea of Sammy winning the title only to have it snatched from him. And then we go to backlash with Sammy Zayn versus, you know, is Sammy Zayn versus Damian Priest the biggest title match you can get? I don't know. If the story works, it could be. Uh, but I am definitely for Judgment Day versus Awesome Truth. I like both those ideas. Judgment Day versus Awesome Truth, you have me sold on right, right off the bat. Jay writes in, one thing I noticed on SmackDown, because everything counts when Rock put the, his thumb was out, could be the out. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, buddy. Uh, uh, Austin writes in, I don't think Ro- Roman versus Cody should be the main event. I have one that's even bigger that I know you will not roast me for. Here it is. Sam Roberts versus Dave LaGreca. Winner gets full control over Busted Open. <laughs> you did such a great job subbing in for him during Royal Rumble weekend. I think you should whoop his ass and take his job. I appreciate that. I, I'm just doing my thing, baby. Anywhere I can be of service, you let me know. Uh, but Dave does a great job. A lot of people do a great job. Uh, I was uh, I was happy to do it with Tommy. I would have been uh, equally happy to do it with Tommy, myself, and Dave LaGreca, by the way, as we've done it before. Shea Boogie writes in, here's a dash of speculation. Now that The Rock is officially with the bloodline, I have a Seth Rollins scenario. Uh, Rock uses his power to enter himself in the chamber. He's not getting in the chamber. You think he's going to fly to Australia so he can be in an elimination chamber match in his first match in years and years and years? The Rock is going to go into the elimination chamber match in Perth, Australia. That's what he's going to do. Uh, and who's he going to take out? Rock uses power by jumping someone with the fan to the point where they're too injured to compete. You pull the old uh, uh, Kobe Kingston thing. And he wins the chamber. He faces Seth. Also, I have a surprise appearance of Steve Austin. Okay, come on, dude. None of that makes any sense. Pablo writes in, first time emailer. Good luck, Pablo. Hope everything is well for you and your family. I appreciate that. Sending uh, y'all big love from Marseille. Marseille. Marseille in France. I hope you're going to backlash, dude. That's awesome. So, as commanded by the rules, I watch the product, and because everything counts, I speculate wildly. My man, it sounds even better when you say it in French. I'm assuming you said it in French. Uh, And even though I love the story we're telling right now and the pitches you came up with, something is haunting me since Monday. Okay. Therefore, my pitch to Roman retaining the title at Mania is he can beat Hogan's record. Uh, Be free to call me a fraud if my pitch deserves it, of course. Okay. In the promo with Cody on Monday, Seth said he had to destroy what uh, he created 12 years ago. Uh, So Roman, so Roman, uh, he also mentioned the shield uh, talking about the shield, that was uh, Seth's uh, theme and gear against Roman at uh, Rumble 20, uh, 2022. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the only fight Roman uh, didn't win to keep his title, he kept it by DQ. Yes, 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 yes. Even Cody took his L at Mania. Yep, I'm with you, I'm with you. Okay, so let's jump to Mania uh, night one. Uh, yes, I'm booking them to do double duty. I don't like that on the weekend because it doesn't work. At, okay, in a tag match, Cody against... In a tag match with Cody against Rock and Roman, Seth takes the pin after being hit by a spear and a rock bottom. The night ends with him looking really, really frustrated, questioning why he even chose the path in the first place. Why would he choose that path in the first place? If he's got to defend his title on night two, why on night one would he be in this tag match? Makes no sense. Also, same for Cody. Um, On night two, after Seth beats Drew in the opener, Cody goes to face Roman in the main event. At one point, there's a ref bump because obviously, okay, I'm with that. Solo and Jimmy try to interfere only for Cody to win the one or two. 
Uh, later in the match, Cody uh, has Roman beat, just like Mania 40 when a man in a hoodie uh, gets in his way. Who is it? Rock, Jacob, Fatou, Jay. The man reveals himself to be Seth Rollins. Why did Seth do it? Well, as I said it before, he's been obsessed by his DQ loss, uh, 2K cover, so he has to be the one to beat Roman. Afterwards, Roman can tell a story with The Rock. Um, look, you're not a fraud, and I'm not mad at you for it. The essence of it is not bad. Cody, uh, Seth under the hood is okay. Uh, but a lot of those details I'm not for, and I'm definitely not for them working twice. Uh, Avic... Uh, Sam, what's the haps from London? I love the internationality of this show. Uh, how about this? The World Heavyweight Championship match ends up being Seth and Drew and Sammy somehow. Another one. Drew wins the title in front of the crowd for the first time, and Damian cashes in right away. Okay, so you're thinking Damian cashes in on Drew. It could, I mean, it could work either way. Like, I get what you're saying. Maybe Sammy wins the money in the bank in Canada. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but... It works good well for Drew in the sense that it would drive him crazy, but it also works well for Sammy in the sense that we've been tracking this story of like, this is the one thing he's got to do, and then he had it, and then he lost it. What's better, to have uh, loved and lost or to have never loved at all? Uh, I'm going to skip this one. It's a long one. We're going to start going through some of these because I feel bad. I feel like so many of these were just sent like today, uh, but we got a lot of emails. Uh, Bobby writes in, thank you for your show. The, uh, it's the only, this is the only outlet I have for wrestling talk. So thank you. I appreciate that. Just saying people might not call him Hollywood rock. If everyone kept quit bringing up his movie career, I don't mind them bringing up his movie career. They should bring up his movie career, but Hollywood rock is a direct reference to the rocks. heel run when he first came back from Hollywood. And that's not what he's doing. He's doing original rock. Also Roman Reigns, TikTok where he says he has a vice grip on the, uh, game's neck, and then Triple H walks in the background. Everything, including TikTok, counts. That's 100% right. Brett, love the show and your positivity and zaniness. I try to include as much zaniness as humanly possible. Rock hits so well on Friday because it's the first time since the Hollywood Rock run in 2003 that he's felt like The Rock instead of Dwayne Johnson playing The Rock. Okay, I'm with you. Uh, let's go to, that's a long one. We're going to start going through these. Oh, Nicholas, just want to say hi, boss. Uh, best mania season, uh, ever. That's the haps. In your opinion, uh, what would be louder? The cheers, uh, the, if Cody wins or booze, if he loses to Roman, I mean, that's a bigger question, right? That's not a literal question. What's bigger for business? I think ultimately, and ultimately it's not about the moment. It's not about the night. It's not about Sunday night and who holds the title up. It's about what you're doing on Monday and then Friday and then Monday and then Friday and then Monday and then Friday and then backlash and so on and so forth. It's about the plan going forward beyond just the, the moment, right? Because like Stone Cold turned heel at WrestleMania 17. Huge moment. Fans didn't want to see it. Plan didn't work. So it's not just about doing the unthinkable. It's about what are, how are we getting there and what are we doing with it once we're there? Uh, James from Hamilton, Ontario writes in. I feel you're, oh, I love this, combative. I feel you are uh, way too nostalgic for 1997 rock. Excuse me? You can sit here and tell me that there is a world where it is even an option not to be nostalgic for 1997 The Rock? If you're a boomer like me and you're not nostalgic for 1997 The Rock, I, we don't have anything in common. If you are sitting there and you're over 30 years old and you go, you know who was cool? 1997 rock and you go no i don't we don't have anything to talk about if you are over 30 and you don't think the rock in 1997 is awesome what are we going to talk about what are the two of us going to talk about we have nothing in common the promo he cut on friday was recycled cut and paste bit from 25 years ago 
I'll keep going. It wasn't exactly creative cheap heat. It wasn't exactly creative cheap heat is the best reference he can muster is somebody is something from the 98 NBA finals. Well, that's the local reference. The best reference that he can muster was literally the Super Bowl that happened days before. The Super Bowl was on Sunday. On Friday, he referenced it on SmackDown. They happened to be in Utah, and he knows they're still stinging after what the Bulls did to him. So no, don't like don't revisionist this. Don't sh- that's it annoys me when people try to shape the argument to whatever their spin on it is. Is the best reference he can muster something from the '98 NBA Finals? No, he referenced multiple things before that including something that just happened. So if that's not recent enough for you, hopefully the Super Bowl that happened five days before the promo was recent enough for you. Look back at his recent forays back into the ring on the mic. It's the same tired shtick. Some phrase from 25 years ago punctuated with some surprise cursing. I'm guessing next week he calls Cody a Rudy Poo. Contrast his SmackDown effort with what Seth weaved on the mic Monday night. One, advance some story in an interesting way. One, forced me to email you about how bad it was. Look, you're allowed to have your favorites. You're allowed to have the guys you like and the guys that you don't like. Seth was awesome on Monday. I'm not here to take two good promos and say one's better than the other. But what I am here to tell you is that you're acting like The Rock didn't join the bloodline on SmackDown. You're acting like the entire internet was not going, when you are going frame by frame, going, look, if you look at this from this angle, he's pointing at Roman. Look where, look at the thumb position. You understand people were analyzing the thumb position of the rock? Thumb position. And it didn't advance storytelling? Thumb position and didn't advance storytelling. He joined the bloodline. Seth referenced the shield. So Seth can reference the shield, but The Rock can't reference a $500 shirt by wearing it? The Rock can't threaten to slap the herpes off somebody's lip? If you don't like The Rock, that's fine. That's fine. But don't act like there's, you could just say, hey, I didn't like that promo because I don't like The Rock, not, here, because you're presenting this like this is not feelings based. You're presenting this like here are the facts. These are not the facts. These are completely biased. This is a skewed representation of what happened. I enjoy your show, even the emergency ones, despite what Peter Rosenberg says. Thanks for all the great wrestling talk. These incidents require emergency podcasts. I may do an emergency podcast just based on this one email. Stephen writes in, uh, hope all is well. Congrats on uh, the new little brand muffin. I know Elimination Chamber is coming up quick and I have an idea for a third chamber match. How would you book a match with other wrestling podcasters? I.e. you, Dave LaGreca, Chris Van Vliet, Peter Rosenberg, Wade Keller, and Jim Cornette. Also, when can we get a not Sam sleeveless vest like The Rock's on SmackDown? I would love an emergency podcast vest like the one The Rock wore on SmackDown. Uh, I can't tell you exactly how I would book the wrestling podcaster elimination chamber. Cause I feel like I get in trouble for it, but I mean, ultimately it's Jim Cornette going over for sure. Yeah. I don't even want to go further than that. <laughs> um, uh, that's uh, too long. And you wrote in bold, uh, uh, Wahaj, I believe, uh, forgive my mispronunciation. If it's mispronunciated, Right, saying those emergency pods are just fire. Keep it up, please. Hey, man, you got it. As a huge Cody fan, I have to tell you, it's very hard to boo The Rock. He's the most electrifying man in all of entertainment for a reason. My concern is, will he overshadow Roman and Cody? Does Roman get lost in the shuffle and it become all about Rock and Cody? No. If Roman gets lost in the shuffle, then it goes to my... First of all, if The Rock comes back and Roman or Cody get lost in the shuffle, that's up to Roman and Cody. It is up to you to be a bigger deal than stars of the past if you're a star of today. That said, they will not get lost in the shuffle. And if Roman were to get lost in the shuffle, it would just go back to my story 
about uh, The Rock taking on that authoritative role in the bloodline. Uh, Joel writes in, that segment of Roman arriving on SmackDown hugging Big Jim Uso shows that he smells, uh, get it, that he smells, get it? Hostile takeover from The Rock. Don't want to lose allies. I don't think so. I think it's more about Roman's mood. I think that Roman is hostile towards Jimmy uh, when Roman's insecure. But when Roman is secure, he's in a good mood. I think that he treats his, he takes his insecurity out uh, on those around him. But when things are going well, he love bombs them. Roman is a manipulative word that I won't say. That's Roman's character. Watch documentaries about cult leaders. This is who Roman Reigns is, the character. I think that that Roman is doing a little love bombing on Big Jim Uso, as you so eloquently put it, because he feels good, because Cousin DJ is there. All right, guys, um, I might have to start doing shows just on emails because, I mean, I have, Jesus, literally, I'm going through right now hundreds of emails, and I apologize, hundreds of emails uh, that, uh, I'm going to try to just pick one from the middle. I feel like I picked some recent ones. Uh, let's see. Um Okay, this one, Isaiah, first time emailer. That's why I hit you. This is the last email. Hope you don't mess it up. Isaiah writes in, first, I want to say I absolutely love the channel and hard work you put into it. I appreciate that. We do put a lot of work into the shows. Uh, secondly, how you feel about my fantasy booking, Cody, Seth, Roman Rock, storyline. Okay, this was sent, by the way, before SmackDown. Uh, board member Rock uses his power to get himself a title match against Seth immediately after he defends against whoever wins the chamber match. Okay, beats Seth, then night two of Mania, Cody beats Roman. You get a winner-take-all tag match at SummerSlam. Roman eats the pin, causing the rest of the bloodline to turn on Roman, and then we get babyface Roman versus Rock at WrestleMania 41. I think I got us to the exact same result earlier in the show without screwing up other WrestleMania matches or without it being... Uh, at all so convoluted. Um, all right, guys. Uh, I appreciate all the opinions. I appreciate how mixed all the opinions are. I appreciate that some of you love it. I appreciate that others don't like it. I, I think this is all awesome. Keep emailing in, leaving your comments, watching clips, uh, being a part of the show. It. Uh, I don't remember a time that it's been more fun to do this show. Uh, and yeah, the show, by the way, extends we not only do we have emergency pods going up all the time but uh if you're watching on monday turn peacock on uh after raw i'm turning raw talk into an emergency podcast wednesday afternoon i'm turning the bump into an emergency podcast it is going to be fantastic not sam wrestling is everywhere and that is all because of you guys thank you so much i'll see you uh a lot sooner than next week i would imagine